As entrepreneurs, you put so much focus on the business and it's easy to neglect the family and you wake up one day and you got money in the bank, but chaos at home. Healthy marriages are like healthy businesses. You got to have systems, you got to have rules, you got to have core values that you guys all align with. Because if my vision is different than Mindy's vision, there's going to be issues. Your business is not what validates you. It's the experience that you have in your life. We look at the home and we try to treat our home no different than we would a business. If I want my business to run well, I got to have a good team and I got to have to have good processes. So anytime somebody says that, like, oh, dude, I don't want to bring my kid there. The school system sucks. I'm like, if you're worried about that, then you might want to check yourself as a parent because... So we're going to bring up the Pinedas and the Nortons and we're just going to, you know, get to know them a little more. So give them uh, some uh, hand clap right now so we can bring them up. First off, we have Jerry and Anne-Marie. Right. You can have a seat right there. Okay. And then we have the Panitas. We have the first lady back on stage after killing it <laughs> on the Thank nodes. You. So welcome guys. First and foremost, we obviously know Ryan and Mindy a little bit more. So I would love to start off with you guys. Tell them a little bit about yourself, your family dynamic. I just heard not so long ago, we're all curious. I'm super curious. You have 10 kids and I wanted to know how. I mean, how? <laughs> Well, I mean, without getting into it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> how do you guys manage doing all that? Yeah. The how part I got down, that part. <laughs> so, you know, when you say 10 kids, even hearing that, it's like, wow, that's nuts. Who would do that? Totally. So it's not, it hasn't even like set in for us. But yeah, we have 10 kids, uh, same mom, same dad, no twins. Because that's usually the next question. Yep. And uh, no adopted kids? Adopted. No. All biological. Okay. Yep. And we got we got married very early, so Emery was 18 and I was 21. I didn't know he was going to tell that part. <laughs> yeah. And we knew we wanted to have a big family. That was always important. We both come from sort of big families. She's five siblings. I'm seven in, in my family. But we thought at the time, you know, a big family was like five. Right. You know, but uh, we, we sort of just took them one at a time. There may have been a few that were unplanned. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we felt like God was telling us that there were more to come to our family. And we felt like we kept having capacity to love on another baby. And we each one we've wanted and welcomed. And, and they're all unique and different, but we, we love them all so much. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So, like, we have our business and then we have Home Inc., we call it. Which is like another business because there's so many moving parts. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. But, um, but we're very intentional. Like, we want... We want to do parenting well. We want to do family well. Uh, our marriage is a huge priority for us. So we put a lot of attention and effort into our marriage too. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things that we like to talk a lot about is um, I think as entrepreneurs, you know, you put so much focus on the business and it's easy to neglect the family and you wake up one day and you got money in the bank, but chaos at home. Mm. And we've gone through that phase yep. a little, right? But we're very intentional now about real success and real happiness is not just the bank account, but really your relationships. And, and so with each other and with our kids, we, we really try to make that uh, a big priority in our lives. No, that's awesome. Like uh, there's not that many parents that are putting that emphasis on both the financial side and making sure that home is taken care of. Mm -hmm. And is there going to be any more? No. And are you guys? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we have no announcements, but we've also found that having that size, like what we learned is the intensity that we were putting into our business and kind of transferring over some of those lessons of intensity in the ways that we were pressuring and pushing ourselves with the size family. Everybody kind of recognizes doing really intense things really does grow you up. And for us, I think the size family that we've had has kind of been our Everest. And we've been able to see a lot of the ways that being parents have really pushed us to confront all of our skill sets. And we've watched how developing operations and systems within the business and then developing operations and systems within our relationships. And something we love to talk about is, you know, your ROI as in your return on intimacy. Oh. And so for us being able to see the way that we have invested in intimacy of those relationships, especially with ourselves, with each other and with our kids has actually been rocket fuel for our business. Yeah. But then also, you know, your business is not what validates you, it's the experience that you have in your life that we're all trying to create. And so sometimes pressuring yourself to do these big 
non-familiar kinds of things, even like, you know, having this many children for us, it's just grown us up yeah. really good and pushed us to the max. Because when you have a couple kids and you're messing it up, mm -hmm. you can kind of wing through it. But like, if you don't figure out some laundry system for 10 kids, like clothes will take over your house. Yeah. Oh. So it's yeah. everything is amplified, right? Yes. Yeah, so Every you little thing. Do. You have to, just like you guys know, when your business gets to a point and you have to, you have to scale. Right. And so it's been really fun to be able to kind of share some of the things that we've learned from going so big and seeing the way other people can apply those things when you have, you know, a smaller number of kids. So, yeah. So you have to have SOPs for your family. Exactly. <laughs> that's what call them. Yeah. We have yeah. different departments and we understand some of our most important hires are for things that we do in our home. We're not doing all of it ourselves and with homeschooling and yeah, you know, it's the that, same sure. as in your business. Like you've got to really think about your team and your own capacity and doing the things that you're the most passionate at. So love that. Love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I wanted to get to the Pinedas now. First and foremost, I want to be the first one to congratulate you guys on stage for having your newborn child, Jay Rock. Thank the, the you. Little man. Thank you. It was a healthy, healthy birth, healthy pregnancy. Super excited for that. How was that transition of, well, we all saw, most of us did, how this all took place. I'm curious to know from your guys' mouths, like exactly, well, Ryan will start first. I'll start with Ryan first. How was that delivering your own child? Not everybody has that experience. I mean, I thought I delivered him, but if you watch the video, you know, I had the midwife on speakerphone and I was like, if you've been wanting to start an Airbnb business but don't know how or where to start, I've made a brand new mini course condensing our most recent six hour long workshop into a jam packed starter course. In this seven day starter course, you'll learn the problems and mistakes I see rookies make when starting their Airbnb business, my three pillars of success, namely how to scout and pitch landlords to let you rent their properties to then list them on Airbnb instead of having to spend thousands of dollars on getting started by buying a property, my Airbnb price strategy overview, which like me can help you make over a million dollars on Airbnb alone, my automation process, which will give you the time freedom and allow you to work on your business instead of in your business. I'll guide you step by step through setting up your very own Airbnb account and mock listing to have ready for your first property. And lastly, I'll show you how to add the same guest message templates I've refined over the years for both quick replies and scheduled messages to effectively communicate with guests. And on top of all of the jam packed education, I'm also throwing in my pro host profit calculator, access to Airbnb's earnings potential tool, my house rules templates, my Amazon shopping list, my pro host budgeting tool, and more. This education derives from three years of running a profitable Airbnb business, automating it to where it runs itself. If applied, these can help you instantly get partnerships with landlords and turn a passion for real estate investing into an extra income or even a full-time business. Students who have taken this starter course have claimed that they've learned more in these three hours of content than they did scavenging for answers in the internet. But no, we're not gonna charge you thousands of dollars like others would. You can join today for just $27. So click the link below to sign up and get instant access to everything, apply what you learned and get immediate step-by-step -step guidance and your mock listing set up or your money back. I'll see you there. I just delivered my kid. This is crazy. And the midwife within a second goes, no, your wife delivered him. <laughs> That's right, she's around my back, so. Yeah. So like, like, what do doctors do then? Do they not deliver babies? I don't. Yeah. Okay. They catch them. They catch them. Yeah. So <laughs> how, how was that like for you though, Mindy? When, because you had such a unique, I guess, uh, uh, birth. It was in your in your bathroom, in your house, in the comfort of your home. How was that? Um, you know, with my first two, I did them at the hospital, and that was great. You know, obviously, my son went through his trials. Um, my daughter had a pretty um, easy birth, in you know retrospect, I guess. Um, but I really just wanted. Um, I just had this vision in mind that if I can do it at home, you know, if I can make a full term pregnancy, because my last two were early, then that was the goal and I would do it. So if I passed 36 weeks, I was doing it at home. And um, I actually have a few friends who did home births and raved about it. So I interviewed a few midwives. I found the perfect one just for me. And I literally counted down the clock. OK, when 36 weeks comes, we're doing it. Yeah. And um, it came and passed, and I went 36 in six days. Um, and then, yeah, I just, Amazing. in my bathtub. We had a, we actually had a birth pool, but we didn't blow it up in time because I had such a like, fast, like, J -Rock was coming intense out. flavor. Yeah, and he was ready. Um, so it just kind of sat there on the side with, like, an inch of water. 
and I was just in the bathtub, but oh, it was an amazing it. experience. Yeah, no. I would highly, highly recommend. I love it. I love it. And I wanted to ask just on that note also, like how, do, how is it to manage massively successful businesses in your own respects so, and also managing, you know, having kids 10, three now, and hopefully more and catch up to the North. <laughs> they gotta, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> but how is it managing that dynamic? I'll start with the Nortons first. We look at the home and we try to treat our home no different than we would a business, which is if I want my business to run well, I got to have a good team and I got to have to have good processes and we all have to be aligned and on the same page with the same vision. So we spend a lot of time, my wife calls it pre-teaching, right? Or just building the culture that we want to have and having those conversations with our kids. Um, she calls it table time, which is every morning there's dedicated time with the whole group, like all the kids. And then they break out and do their own um, things because they're all at different levels, right? So right. some of them have tutors and and helpers. What's the age range of the kids? All of them. No, but I'm saying what's the age range? All of them. Youngest and what's the... All of them. <laughs> so 23 down to two. <laughs> they're older than me. <laughs> so yeah. So our oldest is 23. So our oldest two are out of the house. And... Um, so we have eight still at home and so 18 to two. So with that though, like if we want our home to run smoothly, we can't think that we can neglect it and it's just going to somehow all work out. Yeah. We know that about investing, right? You don't get a return unless you do an investment. And so you have to, especially with the desire for intimacy at the same time as growing a business, which they really do actually coordinate and the mindset of building a business at the same time as a family versus a lot of us, we started with the mindset or he did. We actually had a huge tug of war because I, you know, typical kind of feminine energy eyeballs on the inside of the family. He had his eyeballs on the outside of the family and what was coming in. Hmm. And we started our marriage with this tug of war of whose way was more right. And then when we really were able to realize and kind of grow up that there was goodness and that to be a team, we needed to value both the inside and the outside. And so I think our real superpower then was owning and discerning, going inward, being intimate with self and being able to discern, this is my strength. That is your strength. We don't need to have a tug of war over who's doing what. This is the team that we need to create. But then it really came down to compartmentalizing and just owning what his strengths were, that he was really good at keeping his eye on the outside and had this massive vision for resources that could provide experiences and opportunity for our family. And I had this massive vision for connection and human development and creating an experience that would help everybody be their best self. And then it came time to like actually doing the systems that we had put into place, which was like our favorite term is compartmentalizing. And so when it's time to be with family, you're a hundred percent with family, like a hundred percent with the kids or we have this system of couples time every morning. And it's like super cheesy. And we goo goo gaga look each other in the eyes and we go for a walk and we set up all these systems with, you know, live in helper or our older teens taking the kids. And that's our time where everything else goes away and we're just about our marriage. Or when it's school time, we're just about school time. Or when it comes time for either one of us to be in a working mode then we don't feel bad because we're really intentionally prioritizing and telling our kids the outside of the family, the inside of the family, they both have value. And we all want to respect that. We all want to have balance in our life. And when we're present with you, we're 100% there and we don't feel guilty then when it's time to 100% be into the business. Yeah. And I think when we're trying to do too many things at one time, and maybe that's what people think when they see with as many kids as we have that we're you know, trying to do babies at the same time. Well, I don't have our babies with us, you know, on stage right now. We've got systems put into place. They, we were doing school this morning in the hotel. Um, and, and it's just really intentionally reverse engineering, like what Jerry was talking about, the parts of our life that we intentionally are totally fine and have no guilt about putting into business and the parts of our family that are totally 100% about connection with our kids or connection as a couple. So it's being intentional with the time that you allot right. and make sure that if we're doing school, we're doing school. If it's spe 100%. spending time together as a couple, yeah. you're focusing on that. And then you outsource the kids for a little bit. Yeah. No, I love that. And how about you guys? How do you, I know that Ryan, you have the, the rule where you don't work after five. You're at home in the weekends to dedicate time to the family. You guys do date nights on Fridays, but how do you guys also manage, 
you know, the other things behind the scenes that we don't fully know as far as, you know, being with the kids and marriage and the business as well. Yeah, I think for me, it's very similar to them. And I think healthy marriages are like healthy businesses. You got to have systems, you got to have rules, you got to have, you know, core values that you guys all align with. You've got to have just this vision for your family as well. Because if my vision is different than Mindy's vision, there's going to be issues, right? Like, and, and either way, right? If I'm trying to go do something that she doesn't support, then there's going to be conflict and vice versa. If she wants to do something that, you know, doesn't align with mine, then it can be very difficult. And so I think it's, you know, as I shared um, before lunch, having clear communication on, you know, what those visions are, because visions change as time goes on. Yeah, that's true. You know, we were very happy um, when I was flipping couches and she was teaching, we would have never thought that this was going to be part of the vision and the vision just keeps changing. But as far as like tactical things, you know, yeah, I think a schedule is a huge part. So, Hey, if I'm going to be leaving the office around five every day to just be home for dinner and, you know, I, I take care of my chores when I get home. So like my chores include, um, giving the kids baths and getting them ready for bed. I put both of the kids to bed. Um, my daughter wakes up every morning and I just hang out with her and, and like, we literally work out together and do different things. Um, and then on weekends, you know, that's kind of her time to take a break from being with the kids. And I, I be the dad, you know, and I'm there just hanging out with them throughout the day and, um, taking them swimming and, and whatever the case is. And so a schedule is a huge part of it. And then, you know, being able to make sure we have the time for us and just clear expectations on like what we actually want to do because what we want to do as a couple is very different than maybe a lot of other couples right like we enjoy going to dinner and eating at nice restaurants you know for others it might be simply just like you know staying home and watching a movie on the couch that's what they really enjoy doing um so it, it's just figuring out what those things look like no, I love that. And I love that you guys set a time aside to enjoy one another on Friday nights. I think it's that you guys go on date nights and have that intimate time within, without any distractions and have that. That's awesome. I think that that's what builds a marriage at the end of the day. Sometimes we get so caught up in the business and the kids that we forget our spouse is right next to us. So that's something that I had to also make sure that I pay attention to my wife. We have two small kids and, and it's been a learning experience at the same time. Cause for me, it's natural to be a father. Like I love my kids. Like I can't wait to leave here tonight to go to my kids, but it doesn't come as natural to make sure that my wife is also taken care of in her emotions and she's also feeling loved and she's also feeling appreciated. So I love that you guys are an example to that. Now, segueing to that also, I wanted to know because obviously we live in a world where the education system is a little bit, you know what I'm saying? A little bit weird. So what do you guys, what's your guys' thought when it comes to education. I know that you mentioned homeschooling. I know that you guys are very heavy also on that, but I'll start with the Nortons again. What do you, you, what do you, what is your process? What like the curriculum look like? Give us a little insight there. This episode is brought to you by our partners at Wealthy Creator, the go-to experts for entrepreneurs looking to elevate their personal brand and unlock new income streams. With their proprietary Pineda method, you'll get a tailored blueprint. You'll master content production and discover monetization secrets that work. Don't just work hard, work smart and let Wealthy Creator guide you to your next level of success. Visit the link in the description below to learn more and start transforming your personal brand today. Now back to the episode. Yeah, I think bef maybe I'll let you touch on that, but um, one, of the, one of the reasons why um, we homeschool is as we've kind of designed our ideal lifestyle, that included a lot of travel. Mm -hmm. And um, you really can't have, if travel's part of your lifestyle, you really can't do that if you're following the school system because you got to, you know, you're going to vacation when everybody vacations and you only get these certain windows of time. And so we really didn't like that idea for one. Um, but, uh, and so like when we, when my wife first wanted to homeschool and we've been doing it a long time, about what, 14, 15 years, long time. 16. Okay. <laughs> so when we started, she came to me, she said, I think I want, I think I want to homeschool. And I'm like, I don't know. No, that's not, I don't think that's a good idea. And she's like, we'll be able to travel whenever we want. I know how to talk, too. I'm like, I'm like, in, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. I love it. <laughs> and um, so people tell me all the time, like, well, I want to travel. I want to travel. And I'm like, well, if you want to have a family, you have to homeschool. You cannot be a traveling family without homeschool. So we do a lot. We Our travel is 
we feel like that is real world. We call it real world schooling. Yeah, we just came back from Europe. Yeah, we took yeah. we took a we we now when we travel we often go in groups, so we don't take all the kids. We'll take groups. Um, sometimes we'll take them all. Like this trip, we have. <laughs> Why do you choose who you're gonna take? <laughs> Running around, right? I can't imagine how favorite. much that. Who made who made the cut? Whoever the favorite. Yeah, who made the cut. Wait. Whoever's the most annoying stays home. <laughs> yeah, you know that that. Okay. I love. It. So we took uh, we went to we went to Europe for ten days. We took two of the kids, and it was really hyper focused time with just them. It was amazing. And them getting like they don't normally hang out it was like the sixteen year old girl with the eleven year old yeah. boy. So on purpose, you know, they're not naturally gonna hang out together. But if I pull them away to Europe. Yeah. And they kind of don't have any other siblings and there's not the distraction of friends. Part of that reverse engineering is part of what the homeschool recipe is for us, is that, you know, what Jerry talked about in his presentation today, when you're lying on your deathbed and you're thinking, what did I do the experiences that I wanted to create in my life? And so when we've done that and thought about the systems that we've wanted to put into our family connection and having a support between siblings you know, obviously between us also was super important. And so when we looked at it, we realized the systems that needed to be put in place that travel was a huge way to really foster connection and really be able to also have, I got to grow up in Europe actually. Um, so I got to have a very diverse perspective culturally growing up. And that was something that we wanted our children to be able to have. And so especially, you know, with just being able to decide and choose specifically for us and our family and not everybody's going to have the same recipe but being able to have the control and choose and and I don't homeschool everything like I could you know tell you um libraries of hope is like my favorite curriculum but that's changed over the years and what it's really affords is just being able to create the kind of awareness that you want with your family and be able to teach them about the things that you want to, or to be able to have the time and the space to kind of cultivate those learning experiences, whether it's with a book or whether it's with travel. Um, it just, it doesn't really matter. And you do have to have, you know, systems that you have to do the work to plan for that trip or plan for that consistent time of the day where, you know, we're able to talk about entrepreneurship. We're able to talk about faith. We're able to talk about having an abundance mindset of a growth mindset versus, you know, facts and just stuff that memorization, stuff that Surrey can tell us, right. you know, the world has changed and systems that are for the masses maybe haven't been able to be super individualized, which makes sense. Yeah. But we are creating the on purpose life experience that we want for our family. And so for us, and I, I don't think it is, has to be the right thing for everybody. I, I think if we had less kids, you know, we might be able to, we tried public school for a little while, but I got so many freaking emails about cupcakes and, you know, PTA book reports and PTA meetings. I was like, I don't have time for this. Where's the teacher? I'm going to hire that teacher Yeah. and we're going to collaborate together and build, you know, just the right thing for us. So you have one teacher for, for all the kids oh, no, in school? No, like in the morning when we're doing school, I literally probably have seven other people wow. that are involved. You know, I've got some kids that have got special needs. So I've got Zoom because we're living between Puerto Rico and Montana. So in order to be versatile and be able to go back and forth and still be consistent, I've got Zoom tutors that are meeting online with, you know, some of my special needs kids or higher level kids. And so they're one on one. But sometimes I hire like 14 year old girls are the best resource ever because they're really excited with the younger kids. They love to sit and read with them or they play little math games with them. And, you know, they're not really expensive and they come in with high energy for about an hour. So we do all of our school by noon and then we're able to play all afternoon, whether we're in Puerto Rico and we're at the beach or we're in Montana and we're up in the mountains. Um, so we really concentrate that time in the morning and just, just like we do and talk about with our business, you just concentrate um, you know, all the helpers that we can get and that we need. And I'm working side by side with all of them and making sure that that's happening the way that we want. And I love that. I love sharing with them, with the kids, what I love. And I also love outsourcing the subjects that I don't love. Yeah, no, I love that. And unlike you guys, the Panitas are actually just getting started in the wave of yeah. schooling, navigating yeah. what that looks like for you guys. So I'm curious to know what that looks like for you guys moving forward. Well, adding the element also of the stigma that exists 
that, you know, kids that are homeschooled, they're going to come out weird and all these different things. Like, what's your guys' take on that as well? Um, well, I believed that for a long time, for a long time, actually, because I was a teacher and I did see homeschool kids come to my classroom that were very, that just really struggled with getting along with their peers or following full instruction because now you're not, you know, you're a different face that they're seeing. You're not their parent anymore. And um, socially and even just, I mean, all aspects of them where they just struggled just being around people. Um, but now I feel like, I mean, we're throwing our kids into 12 different activities a week and they're getting the same, yeah, they do. you know, time. And so I don't really believe that anymore. Um, but we've, we've temporarily stopped homeschool right now because my three-year-old daughter refuses to do it. So I'm just waiting. <laughs> We're going to do it. But right yeah. now it's just kind of like. Well, our kids like, are under five, so yeah. we don't technically yeah. have uh, to do anything totally. right now. But I'll say for me, we both grew up in the public school system here in Vegas. And so Vegas gets a lot of crap because we're ranked like 49th or something out of 50. <laughs> and <laughs> Right. But here's the thing. I mean, I love Vegas through and through. So anytime somebody says that, like, oh, dude, I don't want to bring my kid there because the school system sucks. I'm like, if you're worried about that, then you might want to check yourself as a parent. Yeah. Because I don't know. I turned out pretty good. She turned out pretty good. <laughs> I see plenty of public school kids turn out pretty good. Like you can play the blame game on the school system or you can, you know, do something at home about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we got older in our marriage and um, everything else, we were like, all right, you know, maybe we'll do private school because we're becoming more known. And then for the same reasons, the Nortons decided to homeschool. One day I went to her and I was like, you know, I've talked to so many successful entrepreneurs in my space who do what we do and pretty much all of them homeschool. <laughs> and it was mainly, I mean, yeah, ideology wise and what you want to teach them wise, you can do that, but it was more so for the flexibility of like, dude, I don't want somebody telling me when I can go vacation yeah. or when my kid has to be somewhere or what they have to learn to pass a class. So more so, more so convenience and being able to up and leave whenever you want to without having to ask for permission. To yep. No, I love that. On that note, also, what, what do you guys, how do you guys approach your you know, relationship with your kids and raising them the right way? when it relates to your faith, right? We're, we're all Christian here. So how does that play a role in your, in your family? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. The, the thing is, is uh, Amber and I were talking about this this morning while we were getting ready for the day, is, um, you know, whatever outcome we're hoping for with our kids, whatever values we hope that they take on, those have to be values that we wholeheartedly embrace and live because it's not what we say, it's what we do. And so if we can model that really well, this is our faith. This is what we believe in. These are our values. Watch without us, not just saying it, but them seeing us do that on a consistent basis. That's the only way we could ever hope that maybe they'll embrace those same values. Now they have their own agency. They got to make their own choices. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. But what her and I talk about all the time is when, when we have a, a, a kid fly the coop and leave, can we both look at each other and look in the mirror and say, we feel really good about how we showed up. Just what we gave them. Yeah. What they They're, do with it is their own. Yeah. They got to. Yeah. And maybe they, maybe they embrace that. Maybe they don't. And that's. That's our journey. That's not anything on us. That's on them because right. they have to choose. Yeah. But can we feel good about the way we showed up? Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like parenting is more about every day looking in the mirror and saying, mm -hmm. do I have integrity around the way that I'm being a parent? And if I don't, what changes do I need to make? Yeah. And uh, I was talking to some people in the in the hall today, and uh, all our kids were running around, and and um, he was asking me questions about you know like how do you how do you build the relationships? And I said, you know, if I want my 16 year old daughter to want to spend time with me, that starts when they're this age. And I pointed to my three year old, and you don't think that as a parent. Oftentimes, you think, especially as entrepreneurs, you're like, well, every time I come in the room, they run and hug me, and so I can ignore them, and I can be traveling all week, and I can be working all week. And they just, they just love me unconditionally because they know how great I am. Mm. Well, it doesn't stay that way. Right. And if you want teenagers to be involved in your life, which we do, that's important to me and important to Anne-Marie. If, if I want them to, if I want to have a close relationship with them, it's, it's not just 
the quality, it's the quantity, and it starts when they're really little. That's when you get them to to want to be with you as a teenager is when they're two and three. Is there any like time that you guys set aside maybe to pray together or anything like yeah. that? No, for sure. A lot of the systems that we've integrated into homeschool, what I the resource I was telling you about, Libraries of Hope, is this amazing woman who's pretty much spent her life pulling together these deep and abiding, meaningful classics, classic literature that has meaning frames that are doing things for good. You know, it's not just about understanding about facts, but confronting ourselves and um, asking ourselves why we do what we do and having integrity around and feeling really good. That's that's when you're really successful in any area in life is when you have integrity and you feel that you're doing the very best, goodest, you know, thing that you can do for your own sake and for others' sake. So choosing, I think, especially literature. I mean, Jesus Christ taught through parables and he was the best teacher that the planet's ever had. And so if that's how he's teaching and that's a very non-confronting kind of way yeah. to just give a story, we can hear the story of the prodigal son and there can be takeaways that where kids will relate to the son or parents that are relating to the dad or you have different times in your life where the principles that are woven within that story, they come alive to you. And the same thing's true with Pinocchio or some of these other classics. And so integrating prayer, living our lives in a way that shows the abundant mindset. The abundant mindset is a faithful mindset. It's a hopeful mindset. And just showing the gratitude that we have and living in a way that is based in abundance and, and is based in faith, you know, you do, you integrate that into your life. But I think the systems, especially of drawing on as many stories, whether it's from other entrepreneurs and six successful people or classic literature, and just honing in and drawing as much attention to these meaning frames of a life that has purpose, a life that has intention, you know, bringing our kids back to Europe. I'm a uh, Dutch. My dad was born in Holland. And so reverse engineering this experience of bringing our kids back to their roots and where showing them where they came from and the meaning frames that their ancestors took and the culture in Holland and how that's impacting them and the Christianity of their ancestors and how that's affecting their life for good and helping them, you know, actually be able to talk about it, I think has been you know, they're going to do with it what they do, what they want to. But that's what we're feeling like is the way that we want to show up. Yeah. So as parents, all we could really do is give them the tools and you, and put them in the toolbox. And hopefully they use those tools, exactly. right? At the end of the day. Yeah. Because you can't identify. Kids are going to sense right away if you are using them as a parenting merit badge. Right. right. And they will rebel against that so fast. All day, every day. Yeah. No, I love that. So sw switching gears here, when it comes to, and I'll ask to you guys, when it comes to um, the financial discussions that take place. Obviously, you we're all in different stages of, of finances, but when it comes to your marriage and, and you two discussing how that operates from a financial standpoint, especially coming when, when, when there's one breadwinner and that's making the most amount of money, how do you guys navigate who how much money you spend on what, budgeting and so forth? We used to budget. We don't really budget anymore, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Um, now the financial discussion has just always been that I trust the decisions that you're going to make for our family. I feel that I make way more money in raising the legacy that comes, you know, that way. But, um, I think, you know, as wives with, you know, whose husbands, um, make more money, you know, we kind of struggle with this, like, well, I'm at home. I'm not actually bringing in anything monetary. You know, I feel like I'm not making any. So then now I'm kind of weary about spending this because is it really my money and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. But I think um, it goes back to our values when, you know, we decided to get married. We said we were one. And so the money that comes in is our money. The kids that we're raising are our kids. We're both raising our kids. We're both spending money. And, you know, granted, I spent a lot more, but um <laughs> But, you know, it's it just comes down to, you know, this changing your mindset of like, you know, this is ours. This is our life. This is our financials. This is our, you know, everything. And so that it doesn't become a hindrance now. Of, well, what's yours is mine. Or I made this much this week. OK, well, I changed this many diapers this week. You know, so it's like it, it becomes this one up game when you do that. 
um, and you get nowhere. You know, you yeah. just go like this every time. And yeah. so when you have that um, core value of you are one when you become married, then that doesn't become an issue. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's a partnership, it's a team, and that's what we could all strive to have. So give it up one more time for the, for the panelists. Let's bring on 